dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs neuro med a series of video presentations in neuro anatomy it's been called corona radiator 2020 these are a series of lectures hosted on youtube these are more of a study at home uh, type of uh, videos this is being done particularly to um, address our students uh, the institution is closed for a short time and we don't want to lose the time instead we are trying to promote e learning so some of the lectures are now being put up on youtube for our students to go through before they can come back and then we can handle the practicals now in this series this particular topic is part 2 of the spinal cord series we will call this as norma externa that means the spinal cord details as seen from outside that is as soon as you open the vertebral column whatever details you can see on the surface of the spinal cord we will discuss now we will borrow this slide from a previous video that area marked in the rectangle that blinking rectangle is actually the spinal cord posted inside uh, in an excellent uh, packing system the vertebral column yeah. it's, it's beautifully packed just like uh, packing sweets uh, in a uh, sweet box gift wrapping we could say now well, let's explore that in a little detail now you see suppose you you order some material online for home delivery or delivery to the department they neatly pack it so in this example is just to compare it with how the spinal cord is packed let's say a courier has come to you and this is the courier there are three blinking arrows white blue and uh, uh, red now i have taken an example of one of my own uh, courier item which i received the outermost is a solid cardboard cylinder we can, we could say that's the uh, bony counterpart here the, the bony vertebral column inside that there is a, a white color plastic sheet and further inside that you can see marked in uh, red arrow blinking arrow is a transparent uh, plastic sheet now these two together by and large we could consider them as the meningeal coverings and whatever is inside that long uh, tubular thing is is some material poster material that could probably be, be comparable to the actual core content the spinal cord now this is how this packing uh, can be compared within the vertebral column obviously the one and the only purpose of this packing is one the um, protection additionally you can add maybe because of this excellent packing it holds the spinal cord in position if you if you open a sweet box you will see how neatly the sweets are arranged in in cavities or pouches uh, made of uh, uh, plastic same way here also now this is how the vertebral column can be viewed there are two components which the vertebral column holds the spinal cord its meninges and other immediate uh, structures like vessels and nerves and the second one is the spinal nerves the spinal nerves exit from the vertebral canal through the intervertebral foramen marked here as a 
the red arrow. Now, this can be compared to the windows of a tall building, one below the other, the windows, just for a comparison. Like that, popping out through these windows are the spinal nerves. Now, finally, let's remove all the outer structures. Let's go directly to the spinal cord. Here is the area where only the spinal cord is shown. Ultimately, we go back to the previous video, or the, the previous part one. There are two components we need to consider, the spinal cord and the spinal nerves. Next, here is a wet specimen. This is a wet specimen of the spinal cord. Not only the spinal cord is there in this photograph, you can also see wrapped around the spinal cord are the meninges. I by and large call it as meningeal coverings. Actually, there are three components, dura, arachnoid and pia. We will we'll see it in due course. Now, this is a specimen of the once again wet specimen you can see there are two sets of arrows a pair of white non-blinking arrows and a set of blue color blinking arrows now the white arrows are at the upper end of the spinal cord and as you go down uh, watch the spinal nerve orientation at the upper end of the spinal cord marked in white arrow are the spinal nerves and see the orientation they are more or less horizontal but as you go down you can see that the spinal nerves are becoming increasingly oblique as they remain inside the vertebral column this is because developmentally the length of the vertebral column is much more than the length of the spinal cord caudal pairs of spinal nerves need to go through increasingly longer distances till they reach their corresponding intervertebral foramen as a result you will expect to see that in the lowermost part of the spinal cord namely the lumbosacral region uh, there will be a virtually a tuft of uh, individual spinal nerves. Now this we could call it as the cauda equina. This we could call it as a cauda equina. By the word cauda equina, it, it's like uh, the horse's tail. It resembles a, a horse's tail. Actually, when you, when you look at it in, in fine detail, these are not the spinal spinal nerves itself, but they are the spinal uh, roots, the, a mixture of anterior and posterior spinal roots uh, just before they are attached to the spinal cord. Next, this is an anterior view of the spinal cord. I have stripped off the dura and pushed it to the corner. You can see the label there. But now concentrate on the flashing arrows. There are two sets of arrows. The lower one is blue blinking arrows and the upper one three in number are the uh, white colored arrows. Both of them refer to the spinal nerves that is the anterior root or the ventral root of the spinal nerves as it is attached to the spinal cord. Now, this line of attachment, when you, when you see it in fine detail, you can see that flashing circles, blue white flashing circles, these spinal nerves are not attached directly, but they have broken up into many rootlets and these are then attached to the spinal cord. These are then attached to the spinal cord. They are the rootlets. In this case, they are the ventral rootlets. Next, 
exactly along the line of attachment of the ventral rootlets marked here by the flashing line blue white line is the anterolateral sulcus of the spinal cord that's the place where the ventral rootlets emerge from the spinal cord because they are motor uh, in function they emerge from the uh, spinal cord along this line a shining uh, central line is there marked by blue arrows underneath that is an important artery the anterior spinal artery now that line is the anterior median sulcus containing the anterior spinal artery that's a midline structure a sagittal structure next just like we have an anterolateral sulcus a pair on either sides of the midline in the front we also have posterolateral sulcus one on either sides on the back of the spinal cord here the dorsal rootlets are attached here the dorsal rootlets are attached these are the rootlets bringing in sensory information from various parts of the body into the spinal cord next although not clearly demonstrable in a specimen like this a, a portion you can see the blinking dotted lines a portion of the cord with its own set of ventral rootlets and dorsal rootlets is called a spinal segment there are 31 pairs of spinal segments and correspondingly there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves now for reasons mentioned in the earlier discussion namely the discrepancy in the growth uh, of the vertebral column versus the spinal cord the lower spinal nerves are longer than their upper counterparts and that is what forms the cauda equina which i which i showed you i just shown it on a, uh, a model particularly at the lower end remember they have to come all the way from the upper lumbar vertebral area down to the sacrum and lowermost part of the sacrum it's a long distance they come uh, before they uh, exit from the corresponding intervertebral foramen. Now, once again, another good wet specimen. Between the dorsal rootlets and the ventral rootlets, a piece of pia extends laterally and attaches into the dura. Now that is the ligamentum denticulatum, a, a fine, shining, highly transparent, teeth-like membrane. Teeth-like membrane. Now that's the ligamentum denticulatum. This ligament technically attaches the spinal cord directly to the dura. That means the meninges are not only wrapped around the spinal cord there are a lot of these pairs of uh, uh, ligamenta denticulata which make sure that no part of the spinal cord can move away from its anchored location either vertically or horizontally it's just not possible that means it's a nice, neatly anchored and the whole thing is uh, uh, floating in the uh, CSF of the uh, subarachnoid space. This is yet another photograph where you can see the triangular ligamentum denticulatum. Now, although we have covered the general features, topographic details in a wet specimen, we will try to remap what we learned so far on a cross section of the wet specimen of the spinal cord this again is borrowed from the previous video the h-shaped uh, central area we had called it as gray matter 
and the area all around it we had called it as white matter and we had just left it at that we are yet to introduce terms like anterior horn posterior horn etc we will we'll do that in the next few videos but the point i want you to catch is we need to identify all the structures which we just now saw on this cross section to the extent possible you see there are four items here an anterior median sulcus a posterior median septum remember posteriorly it's a septum and on the sides both sides an anterolateral and a posterolateral sulcus the anterolateral and posterolateral respectively the um, ventral and the dorsal rootlets that's the point where they attach to the spinal cord i told you in the earlier discussion that the anterior median sulcus at that point where which was shown in that photograph contains the anterior um, spinal artery correspondingly the posterior spinal arteries are located in the posterolateral sulcus next meningeal attachments to the surface of the spinal cord the pia mater is a membrane which is virtually plastered to the spinal cord everywhere it dips in all the areas and absolutely it it is it is a part of the surface the reason is if you remove the pia if you, we can tear it you can use a forceps and tear it if you tear out the pia all the blood vessels going into the substance of the spinal cord are torn as a result pia can only be shown in co2 on the surface of the spinal cord that's why i put it as a flashing uh, dots or dotted circle next around the pia is as i showed you in in the earlier photograph a very transparent very clear membrane called the arachnoid virtually looks like plastic paper or a butter paper transparent butter paper shown here in red white dotted line dotted circle is the arachnoid matter in between the pia and the arachnoid is the subarachnoid space and there the cerebrospinal fluid is in a dynamic circulation next marked now in thick uh, solid line that is the a solid circle is the dura mater much much thin thicker than the other two and uh, uh, pearly gray in appearance next flashing in green are the on, on both sides in between the dorsal and the ventral rootlet attachment that means midway between the anterolateral and the posterolateral uh, sulcus is the ligamentum denticulatum it is an extension of the pial membrane across the arachnoid across the subarachnoid space then going beyond that to be attached uh, goes through the subdural space and finally is attached to the dura ligamentum denticulatum next blood supply of the spinal cord is a very very important uh, clinical discussion this warrants a, a more thorough uh, video discussion therefore i will just mention the names of the blood vessels uh, so that the rest of it the clinical aspects the ischemic problems all that we will discuss in more greater detail in another video now you see there are three arteries supplying the spinal cord anterior spinal at the anterior median sulcus post two posterior uh, spinal a pair of posterior spinal arteries at the posterolateral sulcus then there are other supplementing arteries which come uh, from the local uh, blood vessels like uh, the intercostals etc there are additional supplementation next from here here yeah, a 
the entire spinal cord between the two artery systems they cover the entire spinal cord for example the anterior spinal covers roughly two thirds of the coverage of this interior or the parenchyma of the spinal cord the posterior spinal the other one third similarly veins are there they drain the spinal cord and all the veins go into six longitudinal uh, vertical venous channels located specifically at these points one corresponding to the anterior spinal artery we will call it as the anterior spinal vein exactly at the posterior end uh, where the posterior septum begins the posterior spinal vein and totally four in number in other words two pairs a posterolateral and an anterolateral pair of veins totally that makes it six venous longitudinal vertical channels that are located on the surface of the uh, spinal cord all the venous drainage venous blood drains into this system of veins thank you for your patient hearing if there are any points you would like to send as a feedback i'll be happy to go through that this is my email id in addition you can also write your feedback on the blog area that is available below the youtube video that was a presentation from the anatomy department st john's medical college bangalore india